so efficiency is a very broad term and it's complicated, uh, particularly just cow efficiency uh, is complicated because uh, you know it's, it's, uh, there are interactions with the environment and genetics and so on. But to simplify it, uh, I think uh, good records is the place to begin. And so if people can collect good records uh, from a production, a reproductive standpoint, you know, pregnancy rates, weaning rate, and so on, I mean, you can benchmark your ranch operations performance over time and work to improve on those weaknesses. For example, if for five years in a row you have a 75% weaning rate, the place to begin really focusing is on factors that influence weaning rate. There's a problem. Uh, national average weaning rates around 87 or 88. And so, you know, that would be a pretty obvious thing. And you can't do that unless you have good records. So for our environment, I work in the state of Oklahoma. We're in the Southern Great Plains. Uh, we have a fairly long grazing uh, season or opportunity to graze for a long period of time with appropriate stocking rate and so on. Uh, we, our optimal cow weight, we think is somewhere in the 11 to 1200 pound range. Now, people need to recognize uh, that weight of cows, you know, is, is maybe only a small part of the picture uh, because, you know, maintenance energy requirements, for example, can have a much larger impact on the ability for a cow to stay in a herd than her, than her weight. We talk primarily about matching cows to their environment. Um, and so the different things, factors that can influence that, and we kind of kind of gave them a definition of what the environment is. It's, it's more than just the weather and the forage quality. It's a lot more things uh, like wind and mud and snow and parasites and disease and those kind of things. So I gave them that definition, then I gave them my definition of a cow that's well matched uh, to her environment. And so, uh, you know, a few things uh, that I included in that definition are a cow that's highly reproductively efficient. So she produces a calf every 365 days for at least 12 years in a row, which would be a pretty high bar to set. Also a cow that has low, uh, it was kind of trouble free. And so whether it be udder problems, feet and leg problems, uh, have to be treated for disease or foot rot or anything like that. You know, a cow that is trouble free is demonstrating uh, that they're probably a pretty good match. For that environment. You need cattle that also produce progeny that are acceptable and valuable after they leave the ranch gate. And so cattle that uh, that you know are, are acceptable from a carcass quality standpoint obviously and then also cattle that perform efficiently and whether it's a grazing system after they leave the ranch uh, probably it's going to be a combination of a grazing system and a finishing or feed yard situation. Rapid change is the norm in the cattle industry now. Change continues to accelerate. So the Aberdeen Association needs to be thinking about what, what are they going to do to improve their weaknesses, what are their strengths, and what can they can do to prepare for 20 years from now. How can they contribute, uh, particularly maybe to a, a crossbreeding system if people are interested in breed complementarity, uh, heterosis, and so on. Well, I mean, the obvious thing uh, that we've seen here at this field day and through the week is that, you know, they can modify mature cow uh, frame size and weight in one generation. And for some people, for some operations, that would be an advantage. If that's what they can do for the industry today, uh, it won't take very long for people to adapt and the other breeds are modifying those characteristics in terms of helping make their cattle uh, more adaptable to their to a given environment. Yeah, we have the tools now to be able to do that. We didn't have the tools that we didn't have 20 or 25 years ago.